Hello everybody. It's been a little bit since I've gotten some new videos done. So here's a one I was been cleaning out my attic and uh, my father's attic of some stuff that I've had for a while. And so this is not necessarily an opening. This was one I got about two about two years ago for my birthday from my buddy Mike. Mike uh, picked up a couple different programs for me. We'll we'll be doing these over the next few days. This is the first ever game program for the United States Football League. This was the Chicago Blitz at the Washington Federals. And uh, he found this at a flea market, antique market, whatever you would call, uh, whatever your term for it is. It depends on what you prefer. So we'll go through this real quick. Uh, there's uh, Jeffrey Osborne. For Miller Light uh, kickoff with interview, uh, which is the USFL named all their programs kickoff with uh, the first commissioner of two, Chet Simmons, owner profile. What a coincidence! Tampa Bay's Burt Reynolds, who actually only owed, owned like five percent of the team. Uh, ad for the upcoming film Psycho 2 with Anthony Perkins. Uh, the publisher Ronald Hagen talks about the new league. And the new programs, uh, Joe Theismann for Canon Cameras. There's that uh, article, promised article on on Chet Simmons. An uh, ad for ESPN. They had the Saturday night and the Monday night contracts at a time when ESPN was pretty much a college basketball and, to a lesser degree, college football network. There's Pony, the official shoe of the USFL. Back when uh, turf shoes were cool. I had a pair of turf shoes when I was in high school. They weren't pony, but I did have uh, a pair of turf shoes. Oh, I thought they were pretty comfortable. There's the Atari Real Sports Volleyball, Baseball, and Football. Look at how long, how well uh, graphics have gone since uh, 1983. And, uh, there's the uh, aforementioned Burt Reynolds. part of the Tampa Bay Bandits ownership. There's the uh, president and head coach of the New Jersey Generals for their first season, uh, Chuck Fairbanks. Chuck uh, was the former coach at Oklahoma and Colorado, as well as the New England Patriots. Before the Patriots, or before the Generals were sold to a fellow named Trump. And here's some notes on the building of a new league. So dates as the league was announced and moved on. USFL jackets for the Blitz and the Federals. Uh, it kind of combines that 1970s NFL Sears look with the satin starter jackets of the age. The official cheese of the United States Football League. Emmentaler. Never heard of that. And I was as big a USFL fan as anybody. Toast the USFL inaugural season. All sorts of these neat things. Uh, seats, cushions, chairs. And then uh, Champion, the official apparel of the United States Football League. Now this is interesting in the pre-internet age. I didn't even know this existed. For $27.50, you get the complete weekly statistics for the league, plus the statistics for your favorite team. I guess that's sent to you through the mail. Complete weekly statistics for the league only. And the annual record book and statistical summary. That's pretty unusual for that age. Back then, those guys protected statistics like uh, Scrooge McDuck protected his gold. This is... Uh, a little bit about the birth of a new tradition. The Washington Federals, who were arguably the worst team in the two years they were in the league. Their head coach, former CFL coach uh, Ray Yock. The club personnel. Not a lot of people you would recognize outside of Ray Yock. 
Here's the owner, Burl Bernhard. A little article from Metro to RFK. An article on head coach Yock from his years at the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And the opposition, George Allen and his Chicago Blitz, my favorite team in that first season. And there was the Federals' big star. They signed Craig James of SMU, part of the Pony Express. So there's another Federal, uh, former Redskin, and about Bengals, Chargers, Rams, and Redskins, pass rusher Coy Bacon. It was 39 years old when he played this season with the Federals. There's Supernat Reggie Smith, who spent some time with the Atlanta Falcons. The Team 4 News. Somewhere in there is George Michael from George Michael, uh, his famous sports machine that was nationally syndicated. Okay, there's our first, uh, the... Uh, Both teams protected starting lineup and remainder of the roster. As you can see, the uh, the roster insert has come loose on that. Other than that, this is actually in really good shape. Uh, Federal's quarterback Mike Hoensey from Minnesota. There's James Mayberry, who once beat the, the New Orleans Saints as a member of the Atlanta Falcons when he recovered a blocked punt and took it in for the score. It's another ESPN ad. Ray Yuck. The Washington Federals cheerleaders. There's the Federals schedule. A season ticket at the lowest at the Mezzanine level, $162. Remember, USFL played 18 games, so that would be nine home games for that $162. There's the signing of Craig James. Thank you to Mayor Mary and Barry. WJLA, turn on the TV7 and turn on to the Federals. Greetings from Jacksonville, where the Federals had their camp. Washington Federal. Here's the uh, Federals broadcast team. Johnny Holiday, the longtime voice of the Maryland Terrapins. Pete Wysocki, former Redskin. And Terry Metcalf, former Redskin, St. Louis Cardinal, and Toronto Argonaut. 1983, the inaugural season schedules. The official game ball, the USFL, I have one of these. It's not the official game ball. Well, it is the official game ball, but it wasn't game used. There's an article on Ohio State running back and the Blitz. Uh, managed to sign Tim Spencer to a big contract at the time. There's the, some USFL caps. Nick Rom Sports, the women's licensee of the USFL. Or uh, on Tim Spencer. And one of those beautiful 70s and 80s cars. This is the Dodge 600. They all look like boxes. And here is Squincher. Squincher, the official activity drink of the United States Football League. Uh, Squincher didn't quite do what Gatorade has done, has it? ABC Radio had, Nash, had those ESPN games. On radio, there's an article on Phoenix, Arizona, which at that time did not have the Cardinals, so they were enjoying USFL football as their first kick into the big time. There's some uh, board USFL clothing rights, Honda three-wheelers, the fine art where you could get the... Uh, a, it doesn't say the, the size, I don't believe, of the poster that is on the front page of this program. Pa the astrologer of the United States football. 
uh, field signals as always more uh, various USFL items for sale and there's the uh, helmets of the league Uh, the only thing that looks a little off is the Boston Breakers is shown as like a gray helmet. It was actually a white. The the waves on the helmet are correct, but it was a white helmet, not gray. I had a couple. I had a bunch of these hats actually. I had, uh, but I had the following season's hats because I had the Arizona Wranglers with the yellow, not the red. Page for kids, the Tampa Bay Bandits, cheerleaders, and there we go. And uh, Mike also was able, when he go bought this, to grab a pocket schedule of the uh, Washington Federal. So I've got that right along with it. So there you have it, uh, the first ever game of the United States Football League, the Chicago Blitz against the Washington Federals. The Blitz won 28-7, to if I remember correctly. I know... I, I, I'm pretty sure it was 28-7. I know the Federal scored a touchdown with under a minute to go was their only score. And I can't remember if the score was either 28-0 or 35-0. Believe it or not, I just pulled that off the top of my head. So uh, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to check the blog out at thoughtsofrs.blogspot.com. And uh, consider subscribing here if you're here on YouTube. Maybe you might be interested and notified when I do further videos. So thanks for the time, and we'll see you next time.